everyone and welcome back to the uncommon man project podcast today we are sitting with josh harry and ryan and we're going to be diving into a topic that a lot of us have experienced personally and a lot of us are nursing a lot of our clients through from time to time and essentially it is around this thing called change and finding time for change and more importantly finding time for yourself because you need to find time for yourself to change so today's going to be quite practical um and very straight to the point everyone's going to possibly hold a different perspective and viewpoint with how they navigate this analysis paralysis or this resistance or even this very um pop culture popular word of procrastination and essentially just walking us through each of their own individual paths when they've been confronted with, oh goodness, I don't necessarily want to change, as well as how they've guided other individuals when they have had to confront these spaces and areas within themselves and within their lives. So today I'd actually like to start with Josh. So Josh, can you recall a time when you were overwhelmed where it felt like the weight of the world was sitting on your chest and you just didn't want to move you possibly were on the rocks in your relationship you were maybe struggling to find work it was just everything was happening at once but there was still the small inclination like i actually need to do something radically different i don't know what it is bring that up for us please and share that in the space like what was what would what did that look like lovely feeling all those emotions again as i go back there <laughs> thanks for stirring the pond um <laughs> it would have to <laughs> it have to be when i first decided like uh my job in education was no longer serving me and where i wanted to go and i'd gone mm. through the process of just trying new things and i was helping it wasn't even a thought of starting a business at the time it was just i'd gone on to new things helping people in different areas i started helping people with back pain while i was still a teacher because that's what i suffered and then as i learned more and studied more and retrained over the years then i was like you know what i want to do this i don't want to teach anymore i want to be a coach full time and help people out with any things that i could help out with um doing that i was like Fuck it, let's go off i went burned the bridge rolled out Next thing I'm like, oh yeah, finances, money. And I had no dependence. So I was I was in a good place at that time, like in yeah. terms of money going out. And we decided, right, if we're going to start a business and do that with our goings as humanly possible, I was going to work online. So we moved to Bali for four months. We were like, cool, we'll launch it out. We'll go hard, get the mentors, do all the things, spend all the money, rock it. And um, none of that happened apart from the spending money part. Wow. And so I'd spent my time, I spent about 10 years traveling on and off through that time. I had a, a myriad of careers and jobs. One of them being, well, if I want to make money fast, I'll go sell my values and I'll work on a deep sea drill ship. So I went and work, worked on the oil rigs because it was like, boom, I'm going to do this job, make as much money as fast as I possibly can. And I'm going to stack this money as my golden goose and it'll be my nest egg so i can come back wherever i decide to settle down i'll have some money i spent all that money i gave it to a mentor and then the rest to facebook as mark zuckerberg for advertising and it that was the road to a very very dark time where i felt like i had a huge amount of pressure on me this is the mm. key point there is by the way i thought and nothing was working i felt like the bloody world was ending most of the time one of the hardest things that that brought up for me at the time was fleur was supporting me financially and that was uh, a back-breaking and biggest learning part for me because i felt like i was destroying us every day i got resentful towards fleur because i didn't have money and she was now the the bacon earning check and I was the guy just draining the bank account. I'm like, we need more money for ads. We need more money to do this. We need that. We need that. She's like, yeah, cool. Not a blink of her eye. 100% supportive. And it was unbelievable. Through that time, 
I had to make some radical choices of change and I didn't. What were those initial steps when they did avail themselves to you? So what did that look like? The small little incremental shift. You mean on the way down or the way out? Well, it can be on the way down yeah. and out. <laughs> on the way down, it was denial of my own truth. Mm. It was like, I believed I knew what was going to work. And it wasn't the current way we were living. It wasn't the current way we were doing things, but I'd already bought into that so hard that I was like, this is the way and the only way we need to do this. And going back to really denying myself of what I was really good at, which was making community, building relationships, building trust, and people seeing me from there and then going, cool, can I have your help and can I pay you for it? And I was in a place where that wasn't working. But I kept spending money. I kept so that took me further and further down from in a business perspective, denying the things that I knew I wanted to do because because I thought that was the easiest route. I saw other people do it. The guy that sold me at the time was like, "Yeah, you can do this. This will work perfectly." And um, looking back, because I didn't trust myself, I went down that path. On the way out, denied myself it for many years still. Denied the truth, kept trying to do the thing. I just kept failing and hitting a wall again and again and again. Um, I think luckily someone from the outside kind of snapped me out of it and was like, why don't you just come and do some of like what you're doing and come work for me? And I was in such a place of desperate times at that stage. I was like, fuck it, I'll try anything. The weirdest thing was like a like a two-year amnesia almost. Like a, a place of, I knew what I needed to do, and I, but the biggest thing was I'd fucking created so many things in my past. Like the amazing opportunities that I created through my life, like running high-performance yacht teams, making ridiculous amounts of money working on rigs, running performance sports coaching, all these things just suddenly forgot about. And I felt like if this doesn't work, then life is over. It's like, what a moron. And that was a moron, a very, like, very stupid time in my life when I look back. But it did lead me in a really positive direction. And as I slowly came out the other side and, and built in the way that I was probably the best way for me to do, to build through relationships. Did you find that as you were navigating all of that, that you were ever very pressed for time or it felt like when you look back, you'd wasted a lot of time. So then it's that sense of overarching overwhelm, like, fuck, I've just wasted 10 years of my life doing this shit. I'm still spinning my fucking wheels and I've got to nowhere. Did you ever have that type of pressure and pulsing against you the whole time? This is the funny thing. Like you have that pressure every single day when you were doing the business the weird thing is is because of that you feel that to have a successful business you've got to be really busy so you make yourself really busy but the thing is I, i'll use like our example that we do now like when we're running ads or something like that it's like there are a million things that you can pull on and change on a website and ads and everything like that and you can keep yourself busy literally all day the crazy thing is is that really it takes a very small amount of time to do that you set something up you let it run and do its thing. You forget about it while it's doing its thing. You come back, you assess, you make incremental changes, not fucking giant bath, baby out with the bath water. And then you go away again. We, we somehow, I suddenly did, built this idea from my mind that I've always got to be at my computer. I've always got to be looking at this number and doing this thing and doing this thing. And I never actually went, what are the three massive levers I could pull? I could have that. just gone surfing. Like I had no kids, <laughs> I'd done all the things that I sh like, well, I thought I'd done all the things that I was doing. I'd missed the majority of them because I didn't know where I was meant to be showing up because I had no idea and the kind of guidance that I was getting at the time was off. But I could have 
done so many things, but I felt overwhelmed. I felt like I always had to be busy. I felt like I was pushing buttons left, right, and center. And then it's probably one of the biggest things I've got as I've got older. It's like, press less buttons. I want to pause you there. Like, I want to pause you there. Yeah. And you, you mentioned your three levers, so we'll come back to that because that's going to be one of the takeaways. Ryan, I'm going to move to you. Um, running the same question, I'm just, if you can go back to a point in your life where it just, it felt overwhelming, like there was just so many different things going on in your space and it felt easier just being there, lying there and just kind of go, I can take me now, like I'm done. I'm exhausted. I don't have time to change. Like, this is what my life looks like. Then this is what it looks like. Um, do you have anything to, to pull on from that space? Yeah. The time that comes to mind when, even when you asked that of Josh was, was a few years ago now I had you know business that had just really grown to a place where I would say it was doing really well. Um, but at the same time, I was starting to, I guess, have some fundamental uh, belief changes where, you know, I've talked with you guys a little bit before, um, as far as coming out of a, a particular religion. And that was all. So one was trending up, one was just changing. Uh, and then right in the middle of all of that, when I was probably at the busiest, there was a very, uh, I don't want to say traumatic experience within my marriage. I've you know, been married at that point, 12 years. And, um, that was, I suppose, the, the the straw that broke the camel's back, as as people say, like the the, the one point that took it over the edge yeah. to where, uh, yeah, my feelings fit the description that you just gave and asked. And when when it yeah. broke, because that's that's like a point of like absolute surrender to whatever the situation is. What what was the the first step that maybe availed itself to you? Like what was the, the one thing that you could pull on just to get yourself to move or to like get what was What is that thing? Yeah, I think at first there was a bit of denial. I think there was um, a little bit of action. I mean, ultimately that's, that's, that marriage has ended in divorce, um, ultimately left that religion. So there were some big changes there. But at that time, probably where, where where the change really happened, and I did something about it. The first half of it may have been to just give myself some space, and maybe the action could have been different. But I pretty much wound up that business um, almost overnight. Had to lay off three people, three and a half, pretty much. I was able to save the job of one of them. They they moved straight onto one of my clients, basically. Um, but took that space to be able to you know take stock of everything that was going on um and that space is what allowed for really positive change not only for myself and my own development but alignment with what i really wanted to do and passion and that sort of thing essentially that period of time led up to coming on board with what was then jcf now the uncommon man project um i was a client of josh's at the time he was helping me through that whole process um but taking that space and i suppose that space allowing me to really see reality for what it was reassess what was important mm. um ultimately prioritize and 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 make a choice um you know there's you know that saying i think a client actually mentioned she said this saying to me today the only constant is change and it made me think of you know one of those one of the seven hermetic principles the principle of rhythm that everything has flow there's out there's in everything has its tides all things rise and fall and typically the measure of the swing to the right is going to be compensated by the measure of the swing to the left like rhythm compensates but that's just typical if we're going with emotions if we direct our focus we can we, we can change how far it's swinging in one direction and over time change that homeostasis. And I think that's what that allowed me to do is to firstly make it a choice and then step into the action, um, which was a financial hit, but in the, in the big picture, long-term, uh, much more aligned with who I wanted to be, what I wanted to do, my own development, it, it pretty much all positive, except for that short-term financial hit. 
what is the driver? So what is that, that underlying feeling that was driving you to ask for more, ask for something different? So you've gone through all of this. You've found a way through mm. by finding rhythm, possibly finding a mentor, um, and you've made some really uncomfortable decisions. But what what was it? Was it the, a sense of that there was nothing left of your old life, essentially, and you just had to move forward? Or what was the thing? Was it just the possibility of there being something better? What was that why, essentially? It was different for each of those elements of, of life. Like as far as the belief structure, it was just no longer being willing to put my head into the sand and ignore uh the, the what i perceive to be the truth lie to myself or not yeah i suppose lie to myself is is right but it's it's more an avoidance of what i can see if i look over there wasn't willing to do that any longer um on the business front it was more just about taking the time to work out what i wanted where i wanted to be spending my time what i get the most fulfillment from and that was that was what led to well i had that conversation with josh initially when i was, I was literally trying to work out what i wanted to do josh said to me I'd, we'd love to have you come and be a coach within jcf i think you'd be great at it but when i don't think you're going to be happy with how much you make <laughs> i remember that conversation and i said to him i was like maybe but um it's not really about the money for me at this point in time. Like I just had that shift as far as what I wanted to be working for. And then on the marriage front and the relationship side, probably at that point, I was still in a bit of denial or still thinking um, or reluctant to let go of, you know, what I'd had for, for 12 years. I think anyone at that point in time, they're probably going to suffer from some degree of sunk cost fallacy right you've put 12 years into this thing doesn't matter how bad it gets at, at that point you still feel like you're very very invested which of course i was um but yeah that was probably another six months is that right about six months later before that sort of the the the, the threads came out like it started to unravel well, thanks for sharing that um, yeah, I think just also going back to what you mentioned, just in terms of rhythm, like, I mean, those, it, it had to be the right time for that to actually happen and unwinding to occur. Um, before we dive into more practical things, Harry, same question. So going back to a space where last straw camels back. So this what is probably that look like for you? as soon as like last year for me. So. I don't think I've been in too many spaces where I felt so confined or limited in my options, just for kind of varying degrees. Like I've never been too dependent on, um, on finances, luckily, or kind of other situations. But last year, when, you know, a couple months after Jax was born and found myself in this situation where the expectation of what I thought having a son would be like, what I thought I would be like as a father, how I thought I would handle myself, handle the situation, handle kind of everything, did not meet the expectations. Like my expectation versus reality was like wildly different in terms of how I was handling things in what I thought was, was going to happen. And I found myself in this space where I felt like I wasn't doing enough. So, you know, we were first time just on my finances. Like obviously, you know, like my wife was on maternity leave looking after him. And then I'm also trying to coach, also trying to grow primal, also trying to be a present dad, also trying to do these things. And then because of, I guess, that feeling or that perception of kind of lack of time, you know, my default when I've got a lot of work to do is reduce my sleep, get up early and just drink as much coffee as, as I need. 
which is like not a good space when you're trying to learn how to deal with a crying child. <laughs> and then so not only am I trying to, you know, look after things in that capacity, but then I'm trying to deal with a crying child, which I have no idea how to, how to handle what he needs, what different cries mean and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not handling that nearly as well as I thought I would. I was getting frustrated. I was getting angry. And then eventually what I realized is that anger and that frustration was at myself, but I was directing it outward. I was angry at myself that we weren't in a bet. I hadn't got us to a better position financially and as a household before we brought him into the world. I was angry at myself that I wasn't far enough along in my journey to be able to have those finances and mentally be able to cope with the lack of sleep, the raising of the child and all those things. And then so also not only that, that as a metaphor of, you know, like your projection is you know, like your perception is like that reflection as well, but it's now in a physical form of he's 50% of me. So it's like a physical thing of, well, I'm getting frustrated at this child because he can't communicate well enough. Where am I not communicating effectively? I'm getting frustrated at him because I think he's being dramatic. Okay, cool. Where am I being a little bit over the top or reacting emotionally and shit like that? And so it was this huge wake up call um, of just like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And so for me, I had this moment of, well, first of all, it was kind of understanding of, I now understand how hard it is for parents of young kids and especially single parents to live, to be able to afford life, let alone do extra stuff like look after yourself and have a business and do all that stuff, which is a luxury, let's be real. And so I had this realization of, well, okay, I can, if I'm that stressed out, worst case scenario, because of obviously the changes that were going on with here, like my salary and that dependence was no longer there. So I wasn't guaranteed a regular income and all that stuff. So sure, I could close down Primal, quit this, just go get a salary job, maybe even do FIFO, something like that to cover those expenses and just find the security in that space. And then cool, I'd be out of here for a week and be back for a week and maybe I could balance things that way and just take that route. But then I was like, well, I could do that, but I'd really rather not because I feel like I'd be sacrificing my values to do that. Like I've never been someone that's been overly driven by finances. Like I went into chefing when I first left school and then traveled as like a bum kind of thing. So like, you know, I had other priorities as opposed to kind of making money. And then it kind of hit me of, well, what if I shifted this from like, poor me, this sucks. I'm stressed. Why can't someone take this pressure off me to, well, how fucking sick of a story is that going to be? And also as a role model for Jax, if I can do all this, despite having all that on my plate, despite not having a frequent, you know, a regular source of income, despite having to look after him 50% of the time as well, like Liv went back to work after 18 weeks. And so yeah. as you guys would know, I'm only working really 50% of the week, the other time I'm looking after him. So like the time that I do have, I have to be freaking on and everything else that comes with that. So that, you know, despite reframe was been really helpful for me in finding a different way to look at things. And I know, um, I think can't remember if it was you, Josh, or it was someone else um, I was talking to and I was talking about like my vision board, like I've got one stuck up right here and in the middle of it, not to be like negative or anything, but as a reminder for me, it just says not good enough. And not in a self-deprecating way, but like, dude, you fucking lost your temper. Dude, you left that mess around. Like you slacked off when you could have been doing something. Like you did shit that isn't aligned with what you need to do and the constraints you do have. Not fucking good enough. And so that readjustment has been really helpful for me in times where I felt like I didn't have a choice, but for a positive because I ruled out the other option of just giving up. Mm. You, you said something a, a few moments ago where you started looking inwards. 
and you recognize that it's an inside job. And I think, you know, where everyone, when you get to that point, is that there's that moment where you cannot be blaming and shaming everyone around you. You've got to account for the projections, for the parts of you that are asking you to look at them. You've got to look at yourself and say, well, I mean, I'm in this situation due to choices and maybe I didn't know better at the time. And I, I can see like that, that makes a lot of sense. I think there's always that inflection point where you're forced to go from the outside to the inside and then, you know, move from that space. Um, so with, with everyone here, I think we can even start again with, with Harry I mean, through to Ryan and, and Josh. So, you know, get to this point, you realize you've maybe gone through the dip, um, you, you see the need for change. You maybe made some points or some areas of change, but where does this whole idea of time and self-care start, start fitting in? And I think men don't like discussing self-care because like, why would you care for yourself? Um, but if you don't look after yourself, you, you can't show up at a hundred percent. You cannot do all the things that you want to do. You're going to end up burnt out frustrated. There's going to be a lot of anger coming up. There's going to be things thrown out. You're going to have, you're basically going to be throwing a continuous temper tantrum in all areas of your life. And unfortunately it's the spaces which are most tender and vulnerable, like your partner or your kids that are going to get the brunt of that. So what, what do you typically do now? You've, you've kind of like you've dug in, you see, you've, you've got this insight. Where are you finding time for yourself to now cultivate this seed that's now been sown through your experience. You see something different. You've got the awareness. Now, how do you start cultivating that? Where do you find the time for that? Because it sounded like everyone here was pretty busy dealing with their shit. Yeah. For me, finding time started with when Jax was having his second nap. So normally, as anyone like as you've raised kids like those are your golden hours to get shit done when, when they go down for a nap and so normally okay so he's down i know i've got at least say 90 minutes two hours i can jump back on the computer i can get back to clients i can run some ads i can do whatever else i needed to do like with work but if i kept just you know burning the candle so to speak just kept like trying to work without taking that time then i recognize that when I don't get it done, when I don't get to finish what I sit down to start, as soon as I hear him cry, I'm fucking angry again. I'm pissed at him for waking up. Like, dude, I haven't finished. Go back to bed. Fuck off. <laughs> Which is not a great way to start that, like, that whole afternoon. And it's not fun to be in that space. He doesn't have a good time and it's not good for anyone. And so I always see it as like prep work of, and like you do for anything. Like whether it's for the gym, like you can't just walk in and just, just like straight to 110%. Like you'll fucking break yourself. And so it's the little things finding time that allow me to be able to do more. Like there's so many principles when it comes to, I guess, optimal performance and efficiency that talk about time blocking, taking those little breaks to, to disconnect from, from what you're doing so that you can be more effective when you actually sit down. And so it's that forethought of, sure, I can push all the way through, work through his nap, stay up late, get up early, but I'm going to be a grumpy cunt. Is he going to get the best of me? Probably not. Am I going to have fun doing it? Not really. When I do get down to do sit down to work, am I going to produce the best work quality? Am I going to show up on my coaching calls the best that I can? Am I going to be solely present? Probably not. So what is the purpose of me trying to feel like I am always working? It, I don't know if it's an ego thing or what it is, but I don't think it's, it's helpful. So taking that break, finding that time to disconnect for me, it's either like meditation or, or journaling or just sitting outside. Those work for me and just chilling out for a bit or an ice bath, but making that a non-negotiable So like, well, if I want to show up and perform my best, then that has to happen. So that, that was it for me. Okay. I like that. Brian? 
Same question. What, what really? does it look like when, when you're trying to find or create that time to look after yourself, to, you know, introspect, to really start, you know, sowing the change that you've now had this insight on like, okay, maybe a couple of things have changed, but I realize I need to change myself. And there's a couple of things that I need to work on over time to allow this change to actually take root in my life. So I think the, the first step is really having some measures in place so that becomes obvious. You're able to, at some point, in some level of frequency, analyze reality and then see it for what it is. Um, at least I would say on a quarterly basis, you should be assessing like most areas of, of your life in that sense, like pro far more frequently would be more ideal. But having some sort of measure in place to be able to do that um i think you also need to be very clear on what you want what 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 the ceiling looks like for each of those areas so if we were talking about health and fitness having some clarity on what the ideal version of you looks like and what you're working towards if the same if it was in in business or same like whatever it is if it was your mental health like have some idea on what that looks like is going to be important but when we're stuck in that fixed day-to-day -day overwhelm running at like 110 percent often that that clarity on the vision just just fades and it's it's not there and i think that's when it's important and not to suggest with my example before you need to take three months off work and really shake things up but in some way there's this there's always a constant process if you really want to be creating what you want you need to be taking the fixed and making it volatile and then in that volatility you sort of find what you're going for what you're after what you need what you want where some people sit forever some people will will, will be in that volatile space have taken that three months off work and just you know surfed here in bali every day and become a, a surfing bum that wouldn't have achieved anything but like the next step is then taking that volatile and making it fixed again and that's where the rubber meets the road so that's where once in that volatility in in that space where you can get mm. clarity on what you want what perfect health looks like for me mental health physical health body composition whatever it is get clarity on that and then put the structure in place to allow you to take the steps to get there so if it was as simple as, you know, you're talking about the, the, the time to do these things, um, having an ideal week laid out, your, your, your ideal diary for the week, that you're never going to achieve 100%, but on a weekly basis, you're looking at what's coming up specifically this week, what's going to fall outside of that, how closely can I align with my ideal week? And, 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 and having the structure can find you into the right actions that are going to pull you towards it. Um, but ultimately, that all that all that all stems from making the choice in the first place, right? Um, you need to choose to put yourself first and be aware you know, that that's saying you need to put your oxygen mask on first before you can really be there, as you said, like really show up as a father, as a leader, as a businessman, as a whatever role you're playing. I think the one of the one of the big points of friction within that is so many guys get. The, they understand where the, the rubber needs to meet the road. And it's just getting them over that lip of like analysis paralysis because they're still going to say, oh, fuck, like I'm too tired. The missus is angry today. I feel really sick. I really want this, but it's everything before but means fuck all. What, what, what did you maybe do in, in, in that space when you had those buts that came up? Because now you've got a beautiful plan. You've obviously, you know, changed a lot of things, but just to like start bringing in that consistency, because you're also talking about that with the review, looking at this on a quarterly basis, looking at the, the longevity of the change that you're, you're creating. How do you get over that? But like, if you, if I was a client right now trying to ask like, well, fuck, we've done everything here, Ryan, how do I get over the butt? I mean, there's a bunch of strategies that you can look at. I think I go to often is like the, the problem often is that you're stuck in autopilot. There's those old patterns that are just repeating yes. and you want to make a change, but like going to the gym when you haven't been going to the gym is a hard thing to do. 
Um, you, you get up in the morning if you're planning it in the morning, autopilot kicks in and all of a sudden you're 15 minutes late because you didn't even remember because you're just in that zone of autopilot. I think a very simple strategy anyone can look at to shake that up is make a change within the environment. Like it, it could be as simple as like shifting your lounge room around or shifting your bedroom or, or changing something. So you wake up in the morning everything looks different it just immediately shakes you out of that autopilot and you're able to more closely align to what you want to do consciously as opposed to what you just do automatically um a bunch of other things that you could change as far as structure goes as well but environment i think is an easy one to look at right away it's a good one that's a good one thanks for that that's a, you might just chime in there i think one thing like you started that question with um nick but asking yourself like well, if I don't have time, you know, but the missus is angry, but this, but that, yeah, but what's the alternative? <laughs> Cause you don't stay the same. You're going to keep going down this path of keep getting fatter, keep getting angrier, keep getting more triggered, keep like getting like, exacerbate that, you know, instead of being a week, it's now six months since you've had sex or you've been on a date night instead of like d doing all these things that you say you want to do, it's now 10 times worse because you haven't done anything about it. So, Mm. it's only going to get worse from here. So how bad do you actually want to change? Because it's not going to get easier or better unless you do something about it. So now's the easiest time that it'll ever be for you to change. I like that. It's also like you, you end up choosing your own friction at the end of the day versus mm. life just handing you like, well, here's the shit side of the stick, mate, and you're just taking it. Josh, same question. It's, it's funny what you guys talked about. I use this example today and I'll, and I'll butcher this, but it was like, you know, it was a story of Gandhi and basically you woke up in the morning and I'm like, well, you got a big day ahead of you. you got meet this guy, meet this guy. Mm -hmm. It was literally a whole day just back to back. And when most people would be like, uh, you know, my day's too busy today. So I can't do this. Can't do it. In his case, it was like meditation. He was like, man, I've got a really busy day today. I better double the amount of meditation I do. And it was like, I looked at, like, I don't have a big underdog story in my life, but I think one of the reasons is we get, we get sold the idea of like, you know, somebody becomes 130 kilos and they lose all their weight and now they're 75 kilos and ripped and everybody like celebrates that. They're like, that's so amazing. I'm like, what about just celebrating the guy who just continually went along consistently, never went over massive weight, chipped away at things had a good life, good family, kept his health right, built a business, like boring as fuck. But we don't celebrate him, but he's perfect. Like he lived that life. He did everything he wanted to do without having to ride these massive roller coasters. And it it kind of brings up this, this thing that's sold to people, the idea of like you can you can have balance in your life, bro. It can be it can be always balanced. And I'm like, Nah, I don't apply to that. And the the reason is because there's always going to be, like Ryan said, the volatility, the chaos. It's where creativity comes from. It's where amazing stuff comes from. However, the reason why I don't think I have this giant underdog story of how I became 120 kilos, one, because I got pretty fast metabolism, but two, the, there's always one like bare minimum thing that I do. And I know if I don't do it, I become a really horrible person and everything else falls apart. Business, relationships, all of that stuff. And the one thing for me was always just one bit of movement. And I use that mechanism for everything. I'm like, cool. If I'm allowed to do one thing today of movement, like I'm allowed to do one exercise even, what is going to be the thing that gives me the biggest ROI? I'm going to pick a deadlift. I'm going to do deadlifts. That's it. That's all I can do today. That's all I've got time for. I'm going to do deadlifts. Or I can only walk the dog. So I go walk the dog. But I always had some sort of movement in my day. And that was the thing that gave me the return to not become a complete and utter like destruction, destroy my relationship. Because that was certainly in the back of my mind when I was in that place. You know, all those aspects, the ability to hold things together came from that. And then the chaos and everything came and turned into something that was pretty beautiful. But I think the 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 choice really important to people is you can choose your winters. You can choose your winter in your business. 
You could choose it in your health. You can choose it in all these areas. You can choose where you are going to go down and up a lot of the time. The one thing I always chose was make sure you do some movement because if you don't choose that, everything will fail, like everything. And that to me, choosing health was choosing that self-care. And that created time in my life. And you're like, oh, I don't have time. I'm like, you can do four sets of deadlifts. It will not take you long. Like it is one thing. And the the ROI is massive. And this is what I try to get through to everybody's head in every area of their life, whether it's with their relationship. I'm like, I'm like man, I'm buying my wife flowers every day. I'm like, your wife loves flowers? I don't, I don't know. She, does, she doesn't seem that excited when I get them. I'm like, I fucking stop buying flowers. What does she like? Oh man, she just loves it when I cook dinner. I'm like, okay. How often do you need to do that for her to be excited? I'll oh, probably like once a month, maybe once every two weeks. I'm like, why the fuck are you doing that? That's one lever you can pull with the biggest ROI. So do that. Oh man, my relationship's great. She loves me. I'm like, fantastic. What about your business? I'm doing all these things and I'm busy. I'm out of my mind. Like, there's just no time for self care. I'm like, What's one thing out of those that's going to be your biggest ROI that's going to bring in the most amount of money, give you the most amount of time back? All those things are like, probably this. And it's like, okay, cool. Why are you not doing that? I don't want to. I don't like that part. Okay, cool. Sweet. Keep doing all the stuff that keeps you busy then and have no time. So I think luckily enough, and unluckily as well, like I have a natural ability to see for myself what's my biggest ROI. But in that instant, when I, when, you know, business was new and everything was going there, I stared away from the things that I knew would give me the best outcome, but I kept one thing in my life that kept me sane, and that was self-care. That's what I made time for. And I'm not talking, like, people have an idea of what I do for training, and even this has its seasons and fluctuations. I can't keep a balance of doing 24 to 28 hours of training a week, trying to, like, go and win the coast to coast and still have a great relationship and run a business like i'm dreaming it's just not going to happen something has to give but i can maintain a very good level of health have an amazing relationship and run a business like that's a can but i can't just go like maximize out and just drill, absolutely drill myself in health but i can have seasons I'm like, cool, in two years' time, I know that I'm going to have to reintroduce that training. How do I set things up? How do I do things in my business? How does my partner know that it's part of my mission so she's excited about it, so she knows when I'm out for six or eight hours on the bike on the weekend? She's like, oh, okay, it's not ideal, but you know, I'll put up with it for the next six months to, so Josh can achieve his goals. I think that's really important for people. I'm always based on what's important to you and what gives you the the best thing to jump off the biggest foundation and the biggest foundation is you all the time. Can't disagree with that. Does anyone else have anything to add to that? Because essentially we, we dived into an actionable strategy. So you guys touched on that. Um, but is there, is there anything that you, you wanted to express a little bit more um, or could just consolidate something that you said previously? I think Josh, um, like raise the point of having a, a, a key activity related to health is, is like a keystone habit for everything else, which is really great as well. But he also like inadvertently touched on the point of like raising the floor, not just focusing on the ceiling, like not just focusing on like, what do I, where do I need to be? I need to be doing those four sets of deadlifts plus 20 other sets of other stuff every single day or four days a week. Like that might be what you're striving for, but having the minimum standard as better than lying in bed or better than like, getting sucked into Facebook or even just busy work stuff. When, when I've been in that place where I've slipped away from the gym as far as, and as much routine as I would like, you know, maybe I've gone through months where I've averaged once or twice a week and I'm trying to get that momentum back. I've just allowed myself to tick the box, say that, yep, I'm back on track. I'm, I got to the gym, especially on leg day. If I just, if, if I just, if I just did one set of squats, that was me. If I, if I did that, that was, that was what allowed me to tick the box. I never went in and just did that. Sometimes I went in going, I'm just going to go in and do that set, but you never settle there. So having, 
having a minimum standard that's reasonable that anybody can say, yep, I can achieve that today. Love it. Harry? I think there's also, for people that use the excuse or tell themselves that they don't have time, how many people or how many of us, when we get into those situations, use coping mechanisms that take up fucking time? Whether it's social media or people go drink, use drugs, or like use these distractions and these coping mechanisms because everything in life is too hard, too stressful. I want a dopamine hit. I want to feel good. I want to forget about all the shit that's on my fucking plate and go to something else. If you took that time or even a fraction of that time and put that into something a little bit more constructive in any of these areas, it's going to give you a better ROI. Just about guarantee you can find some time. So actually audit your life and look at the time wasters and the things that you're doing to avoid yourself and avoid yeah. the outcome that you're gunning for, to avoid your mission. If you, if you download the Opal app, um, it's a screen saving efficiency app. Not only will it tell you where you spend your time, like obviously you can block apps and screen times and all that kind of stuff. It will tell you how many times you pick up your phone every day. And people's guess would be like, oh yeah, maybe like 10 to 20. Bro, it's in the hundreds, right? For, for most people, <laughs> like it's ridiculous. So if all you have to do is look at your average screen time for the day and for the week, there's your phone, there's your time. Congratulations. You've just given people time, Harry. Thank you. Thank you for the time. I know. They call me, that's why they call me the wizard. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, but thank you so much for just taking the time to, to share just a bit of your stories and um, the way you, you perceive self-care and finding space for yourself and, um, you know, showing that, you know, all of us in some way, shape or form share all these common patterns and beliefs and ideas around, we don't have enough time or don't have enough energy or it comes back down to choice. As Ryan was saying, it comes back down to having a functional way with a, you guys talked about a, a like a, a base layer or a bottom line. Um, I had another coach that called it a zero point. Like you move that zero point up. So that's like your minimum. And if you can find a minimum that is that you can do consistently, you can always up that standard. You can always increase it by a percent or two or three when you have capacity. And tying into what Josh was saying about seasons, not everything's going to be spring and not everything's going to be summer at the same time. Things are going to take, you know, different, um, be on different cycles and be in different phases as well as yourself. Like your body isn't going to feel the same the whole year. Your relationship isn't going to feel the same the whole year. Your business isn't going to function the same the whole year. Working with those rhythms. So when the pendulum swings from one side, you are aware of what you can do to bring it back to, like you said, Ryan, that homeostasis. So guys, thank you so much for, for sharing your, your wisdom, your insight and your um, actionable steps. And I hope that whoever took the time to listen today has something that they can take away and implement and be it, share it with someone else that may be looking for time and maybe looking for change within themselves and within their lives. Thanks for listening guys to another amazing uncommon man project podcast. If you want to find us and join our community, we have over 20,000 thousand guys and they're all going after their summits and we have mountains of resources and trainings in there to help you you can join us in the link over the high performance man group and if you would like to understand the foundation that we help our clients build the life that they want and chase their summits down which is called the pyramid of performance i'll drop the link to that and you can go to that training page and we'll put a special bonus on there for the guys who watch all the way to the end that you can get the how and implement a exactly what we do with our clients on a daily basis to get towards their summit as far as as possible and eliminate the roadblocks awesome to have you here can't wait to see you and listen to any reviews or any shares that you have on the next one cheers